Sun, surf and especially sand is what we think of when we think of a beach. But in New Zealand, not all beaches fit this picture. In fact, some can be downright inhospitable. But as Susan Weiser explains, these seemingly desolate places are special. Well, shingle beaches are much less common worldwide than sandy beaches. They tend to only occur in places where there's a source of gravel. Uh, to make the beach. So these are places where there was glaciation in the past, or where there are high mountains that are actively eroding, or areas that are tectonically active. New Zealand has all those characteristics, and that's one reason why we have so many shingle beaches. Um, but they're also quite different than sandy beaches because the nature of the substrate is so different. So that means they support different kinds of plants and different kinds of animals. This plant, um, Mulembechia ephedroides, or leafless pahuihui, is listed as declining on the New Zealand threatened species list. And when you first look at it, you might just think that's just a pile of dead sticks. But it's actually not dead sticks. The plant doesn't have any or just has really tiny leaves, is naturally this color. And you can even see little flowers and fruits on it. But besides just being a plant that's interesting in and of itself, this, these low mats may provide shelter for other native species to get established. So there's a, a little coprosma here. There's this riolia here. Um, there's this native grass here, which unfortunately is quite eaten by rabbits. Shingle beaches are also one of a whole set of habitats in New Zealand that are naturally uncommon. And these are habitats that occur in environments that are extreme. And they're unusual in being extreme. And that means they often can support unique plants and animals and unique combinations of plants and animals. There's been a lot of research done about the geomorphology of beaches, but very little about the biota that occurs on them. Ours was the first study to look at shingle beaches nationwide and to try and understand what plants are, and animals are found where and how does this vary around the country. It's part of a larger program, research program studying ecosystems that are naturally rare. And once we had compiled a list of those ecosystems, we had to set priorities as far as which ones needed more intensive study. So we looked across all the ecosystems we defined and determined which ones hadn't been studied, which ones appeared to be most threatened, which ones we needed to know more information about. And that was how we honed in that shingle beaches are very threatened, um, often very disturbed, and yet we didn't really know much about them. Threatened by exotic weeds from nearby residential development and farms, the native vegetation and habitat is also disturbed by careless use of four-wheel drive vehicles. The study has so far documented more than 450 plants over sites throughout the country, finding more than half of these to be exotic species. Also discovered was a population of exotic ants, a biosecurity issue. But on the plus side, there were range extensions of some invertebrates that were thought to be very rare, and the discovery of a new species of plant in Fiordland. Knowing what plants and animals occur at which beach and why is a really important piece of information to use to guide land use decisions. And for example, some of our information has already been used to guide resource consent decisions around gravel extraction on shingle beaches. And what we can do is say, okay, this area doesn't have any um, native plant communities. This is a suitable area to take gravel from. Whereas this area over here does support good native plant and potentially invertebrate communities. And so it's not such a good place to take gravel from. A second um, finding we made that's quite important is that Gravel beaches, it's not like they exist in isolation from all the other coastal ecosystems around them. And there they share species with coastal turfs, with sand dunes, and also with braided riverbeds. So when we're thinking about how we should manage and protect these areas, we actually have to think about the entire complex of these ecosystems that co-occur to each co-occur with each other rather than thinking about individual species or individual types of habitats in isolation. Susan says this research is just the start. 
there there have been very few restoration trials or efforts in gravel beaches and so we still need to do a lot of work to understand how to do that. Um, we need to know what kind of species are the best species to establish in these places and we also need to develop the techniques to allow them to successfully grow once we've planted them.